Hi guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to cover a very important and mostly used Spring Boot annotations interview questions. Please like, share and subscribe to support us and we are setting a like target of 500 likes. So we are going to start with a very basic thing, what is Spring Boot and what are annotations. So Spring Boot, as you all know, is a very popular Java framework and Spring Boot is actually built upon Spring Framework. And why was it introduced in IT industry? That is to minimize the amount of configuration and boilerplate code that you need to get started with. But Spring Boot is the way to create quickly with least configuration and least boilerplate code, a code which is capable enough to be deployed in prod. Java started giving support to annotations only from Java 5. How did Spring manages itself and its dependencies prior to Java 5 was introduced? So prior to Java 5, the behavior of Spring framework was largely controlled through XMLs. So while covering the Spring interview questions, we have seen that you can inject your dependencies and manage your dependencies and let this con uh, the container know where to find it through three ways. First, through XML configuration. Secondly, through annotations. And thirdly, through Java configurations using at the rate configuration and at the rate bean annotations. After Java 1.5, the life of Spring people also become much more easier because they have started using annotations. Now, what are annotations? So, annotations are nothing but metadata for either your compiler or JVM to understand what this class actually do. So, let's start with very first and very important Spring Boot annotation, which is at the rate Spring Boot application. So, at the rate Spring Boot application is nothing but a combination of three annotations internally. So, I'll give you a live demonstration. So whenever we created an any kind of application, like I'll take an example of our REST application itself. So the very first thing that actually loads and that actually runs is our main class. You need this annotation to kickstart your application, right? Now this at the rate Spring Boot application is consisting of three major annotations. At the rate configuration, at enable auto configuration and component scan. I'll give you a quick overview and then we will get into inside each and every of these annotations. So as said earlier, Spring Boot is not standalone. It is built upon Spring. So Spring Boot annotations also uses existing Spring annotations. So if you can see here component scan, it's a Spring framework annotation. And rest of them are Spring Boot annotations. So you can see here Spring Boot auto configure and component scan is existing Spring framework. Now coming to these three, the very first is at the rate configuration. Consider this as at the rate configuration. It is just inherited by Spring Boot to make it Spring Boot configuration. If I make you go into this annotation, you can see it's nothing but at the rate configuration. So even though your Spring Boot configuration is a Spring is in Spring Boot framework. It actually uses at the rate configuration, which is internally a Spring Framework annotation only. At the rate configuration marks or tags your class that it is a source of bean. So when you use at the rate Spring Boot application, internally it also has three things. At the rate configuration, this particular annotation says that this particular class is a source of all the beans available in your application. Now you will ask me, these are just two lines. How can you say these two lines are source of all the beans that exist in your application? So for that, Spring and Spring Boot application also has at the rate enable, auto configuration and at the rate component scan. At the rate component scan says that particular package is the default package. Go scan each and every class inside each and every sub package of this base package and find out all the beans and create that bean in the container, Spring container. So if I say that this class is the base and will be the class containing all the beans in this whole application, then it's true because component scan is the one who is responsible for actually scanning each and every sub packages and each and every class in that sub package, find out these beans and create that bean in container. And what does this enable auto configuration do? Enable auto configuration enables this creation of beans in container. We will go in deep in all these three in few minutes. But remember this at the rate Spring Boot and app application is combination of three. At the rate configuration which says I am whole and soul a class which is responsible to create and give you all the beans to container. 
component scan is the one who is responsible for actually scanning and auto configuration is actually responsible for creating those scanned beans as a bean in container. So all the three together makes your life very comfortable and easy. So we can say that this particular annotation cannot exist alone. It needs Spring Framework annotation also in its com as its own annotation to work. Now you'll ask me what are these target retention documented inherited. You just told about the three. What are these four above these? So I'll tell you quickly what these annotations actually do. At the rate target means it specifies at which type the annotation is going to be used. It should be used in either class or method or constructor where I'm going to use it. So we all, we all know that Spring Boot application we always use on a class. It's a class level annotation. And that is why we have used ele element type which is nothing but an enum. We have used type. So type is used when you are going to declare that annotations over a class or over an interface or enum or record. Now, if it would have been an annotation which can be used on a field or variable, then it could have been used as target element type dot field. Similarly, method if, if particular annotation can be used on method. Now, example of this is at the rate override. The parameter, constructor, annotation type, package and many more. With this, we understood that target is on which place are you going to put this annotation on. Now, what is retention? So, retention is to define in what level your annotation will be available. So, there are basically three levels. First, when we write our source code. Secondly, when we compile our source code. And thirdly, when we run our source code with the help of JVM. So, there can be a case that you put an annotation, but it is discarded during compile time. So, it is only for reading purpose. Just to make the code readable. So, that's when only till the source code is available, that particular annotation is retained. And during the compile time, it is discarded. So, it will not be available in even the dot class files. Second retention policy is class. So, it refers to the dot class file. So, it, this particular annotation, when it is in the retention policy of class, will be available to compiler but not to JVM during runtime. So, you can see that annotation in dot class file. The last is retention policy dot runtime, which is our case. So, here our retention policy is runtime. So, this annotation that we have used here at the rate Spring Boot annotation application is going to be remained even in dot class file, even in java file, that is the source code, and also will be available during the runtime also. So, it will be available to compiler also and it will be available to JVM also. So, during runtime, it sees okay, it is a Spring Boot application. That means I have to kickstart my application with this particular class. Go and find or scan each and every base package, each and every class and create a bean using auto configuration in the container. So, this was all about retention. Now, what is documented and what is inherited? So, we'll see that by default, annotations are not inherited to subclasses. Annotations are simple interfaces and they are not inheritable. Until unless you don't use at the rate inherited annotation. So, at the rate inherited annotation marks the annotation to be inherited to all the subclasses of that particular annotation. So, this is inheritable. At the rate documented, what does it do? It simply means that the annotation is inclusive in the documentation. Let's go into documentation of it again. So, it says if annotation is typed and annotated with documented by default the tools like Java doc. So, whenever we want to document our APIs, we use Java doc for documentation. By default, a tool like Java doc will also display these annotations in the output. At the day, document is just to document this annotation in your Java docs. So, now we know all the four of them. Now, we'll go inside all the three of them. So, we'll start with at the rate configuration. Most of the thing I've already told you, at the rate configuration says on whichever class you annotate it, it will become a source of all the beans. So, tags the class is a source of all the beans for the application context. So, for the whole application, you will get bean only in these in this class. Now, just two line of code is not the bean that you're going to get. The component scan and auto configuration does the magic. It goes and scans and creates the bean and container. What is Spring Boot configuration? Spring Boot configuration is an annotation which is actually annotated with configuration only. So, at the rate configuration is 
of Spring Framework. We have just used it in Spring Boot configuration in Spring Framework, in Spring Boot Framework and modified it with some extra methods, nothing else. It's nothing else but internally at the rate configuration only. A very important interview perspective question is, if you annotate a class with at the rate Spring Boot application or at the rate configuration, does it become a bean? So the answer is yes. Whenever you annotate anything with at the rate configuration, it becomes a bean for container. The reason being the when you go into the source code of this configuration annotation, you can see it's a component, at the rate component. And whenever a class or an interface is annotated with at the rate component, it becomes a bean for the container. Whenever you have a main class, this is also a bean. So you cannot see any kind of bean description here explicitly, but this Spring REST API demo application is a bean because internally Spring Boot application has at the rate configuration, which internally is nothing but at the rate component. So yes, your main class is also a bean annotated with at the rate configuration, which is nothing but internally at the rate component. Now what is enable auto configuration? So you have a pom.xml, right? So all the dependencies that you add here are set of jars that you download from central, Maven central repository, right? So whatever you define in form.xml or you explicitly add in your class path using the build path, automatically what enable auto configuration does is it goes into each and every of those class in that particular set of jars and automatically configures and scans the bean out of these jars. I'll give you an example. If you have Spring Boot Starter Web Dependency, so do we have that? Yes, we have the Spring Boot Starter Web Dependency. That means internally, it has embedded Tomcat Dependency also. So Spring Boot automatically configures, auto-configures Tomcat and Spring MVC in your application. So if you can see, there is no explicit configuration in any of your properties or anything. We just added a jar and Spring Boot is smart and intellectual enough to automatically configure Tomcat for you. How is that possible? That magic is done with auto configuration. So even if you have added an explicit jar using the build part, then also Spring Boot is intellectually capable enough to configure your Tomcat Servlet web server factory. Now you'll ask me what is Tomcat Servlet web server factory. This is a class responsible for instantiating a Tomcat. I'll show you quickly. So this is the class responsible for instantiating a Tomcat at port number 8080. A very important thing from interview perspective. If you don't want to embed a Tomcat Servlet, but you want to create an own web server, then there's a Servlet named as Servlet web server factory. So I'll show you that also. So this is Servlet web server factory. This interface will help you to create and link your web server in your Spring application. So if you have your internally created configuration for your XYZ web server and you don't want Tomcat embedded server, then you can create it and then auto configuration will take a step back. It says, okay, I'm not going to configure default Tomcat for you. Since you have created your own configuration for your own web server, I'm not going to auto configure Tomcat for you. Rather, you can go ahead and have your own configuration. So that is the beauty of auto configuration. Auto configuration takes the least precedence when you define your own configurations. So that's the beauty of enable auto configuration. The package of the class that is annotated with at the rate enable auto configuration has specific significance and is often used as default one. Since I have at the rate enable configuration at this class, this package is na named as default package. That com code decode spring rest API demo is the base package and dot controller dot entity dot repository and dot util are the sub package of this package only. So you should always define your enable auto configuration in the default package so that Spring can scan the base packages like controller entity repos and auto configure the beans found in the classes in these sub packages. So it's generally recommended you should place your enable auto configuration or indirectly your Spring Boot application which internally contains this in the root package so that all the sub packages and classes will be searched using the component scan 
and it should always be used with accurate configuration annotation now you'll ask me why it should always be used with configuration because it is going to configure beans in your container so you should tell explicitly the jvm that this class is going to be the one who gives beans to the container we have two more uh, ways in which you can exclude your auto configuration so the first is exclude and second is exclude name so if you want to exclude list of, list of classes from your auto configuration you can do that with this way at the rate enable auto configuration exclude your auto configuration jdbc template class so i don't want that my jdbc class should be auto configured i i have some other template say i have some orm template to configure my database connectivity then you can exclude it explicitly using this way if you you know the fully qualified class name and you want to add them in the list then you can also use at the rate enable configuration with exclude name so with exclude name you have to for sure give a fully qualified list of class names that you want to exclude while auto configuration so what auto configuration does is automatically creates bin when you exclude a class the bin for that particular class is not going to be created in container so jdbc template auto configuration class with this line or this line is not going to be created in your container and your container will not be confused when you ask for a database bin third part is component scan we have covered these two we'll quickly see the component scan so when we work with spring we annotate our class in order to make them into spring beans furthermore with component scan we tell spring where to search for these annotated class so when we come to spring we want that our controller should be found we want this controller to be available at run time so that we can hit our find all apis or get apis then we have to mark it as at the rate controller this is the way to let container know this is a bean but how will you tell container where to find it so here with component scan you tell the container go to the base package find all the sub packages so these are the four sub packages scan each and every class in each and every sub package and create a bean for all these annotations like at the rate controller at the rate service at the rate repository at the rate component at the rate bean at the rate entity create the beans keep it with you we will be needing at run time we can tell with component scan the spring where to search these classes component scan it is used with iterate configuration similar to iterate enable auto configuration it is always used with configuration similarly component scan should always be used with configuration because when when you scan it that particular package in class becomes the source of beans for container so you should explicitly annotate it as at the rate configuration so that you can tell the spring the packages to scan for annotated components the component scan without arguments tell to scan current package and all of its sub packages so currently you are going to search for this package and all its sub packages so currently i'll give you a demo quickly if i run this find all i get my outputs right so this is the data which i have in my database now suppose if i modify this package name and make it code decode dot test dot spring rest api demo what will happen so this becomes my base package right now my base packages form code decode test so these are not the sub packages of this package so now if i try to hit and run i am going to find no controller found there is no controller available why because this controller is available in com.codedecode.this package our base package is com.codedecode.test so this is not the sub package and hence your code breaks so let me quickly get this back now if i run it it will be all fine the importance of having the at the rate component scan at the default package because the default current package and sub packages are only going to be scanned otherwise it's not going to be scanned and since the controller's bean is not created with spring at run time spring was not able to give you back the bean for your controller and hence your api was failing now we can filter the scanning so oh, i have so much to cover i have the filters to cover i have types of filters i have type exclusions 
I have difference between auto configuration spring application. I have so much to cover. Please let me know in the comment section if you want to want me to cover more of this. Let me know in the comment section if this video is going towards the right direction and you want me to cover each and every annotation used in the Spring Boot. Thank you.